You never call, baby. Daydreaming again? But I love you still. You know I'm driving, right? I do. But it's up, baby, just to let me down. If you ride, Unless you get it. Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis ignited the great celebrity bath debate, especially in my house, when they revealed they don't wash their kids every day. If you can see <laughs> the dirt on them, clean them. Happening now. She died over the weekend in a fiery wrong way crash. The family of this registered nurse now telling her story and giving words of wisdom for people who choose to drink and drive. Plus, some healthcare workers describing the new surge of COVID-19 as a humanitarian crisis as hospitals across the nation fill to capacity. Coming up, the grim pandemic record, the Delta variant, is breaking. Pretty quiet around here, but we are tracking a few systems in the tropics. I'll be back with that and let you know how hot it's going to be the rest of the week. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, it is seen as a last resort to keep people out of the hospital. The COVID-19 Antibody Treatment Center at Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall opening up tomorrow. And here's what we know so far. There are 143 beds available where patients can receive antibody infusion with the drug, drug Regeneron. County Judge Nelson Wolf saying today, last year more than 3,000 patients received that treatment to help prevent them from going to the hospital. Judge Wolf saying as of today, there are more than 1,100 patients in the hospital. He says an overwhelming majority, about 88% of them, are not vaccinated. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg sharing a message of why this center is needed now. We are seeing accelerating numbers in our hospitals extremely dangerous not just for the people who are in the hospital but those around them and our medical community that has been overstressed now for the last 18 months the treatment is provided to covid positive patients who are at high risk of getting severely sick this is one of five centers set to open up in texas if you and you do not have to be from bear county in order to be treated there but there are some things you need to know about this treatment in the clinic the treatment is not fda approved it does have emergency use authorization though the center which is operated by bcfs is not a walk-up clinic if you have symptoms, you're going to need to talk with your doctor and they will need to recommend and order the treatment. The treatment, though, is free of charge. The center opens 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. starting tomorrow. A daughter and a friend whose life was cut short. It's how the family of Danuela Lute, a woman killed in a head on crash this weekend, described her. She and another woman died Saturday when police say 58 year old Ricardo Rodriguez, suspected of being drunk, drove the wrong way and hit their vehicle head on. Today, Lute's family spoke with our Jaffney Gray about her life and their loss. I've gone past saints <laughs> directly to Angel. And that's what she was. She was an angel. Michelle Taylor and Philip Lute are the proud parents of 25-year-old Daniela Lute, a nurse with Methodist who had a dream to work in geriatrics. They say Daniela was determined, strong-willed, and was always there for the many people she impacted daily. She had the uncanny ability to make me laugh no matter what I was going through. And she loved her patients. She was not just their nurse. She was their counselor and their protector and their, friend. and their friend. Saturday, their world turned upside down. I've been devastated in a profound and ugly, intrusive way. Just after 2.30 a.m., San Antonio police say 58-year-old Ricardo Rodriguez crashed head-on into Daniela and 27-year-old Diana Rubio. This after he allegedly drove the wrong way at 90 miles per hour along I-35 and Walsham Road. The impact killed both women. They're beyond angry with Rodriguez, who survived the crash. He probably has children. She's never going to have children. He probably was married, had a marriage. She's never going to have that. They want to raise awareness about the damage intoxicated driving can cause. I just want people to think of her and that poor young lady that died for Nothing. no, no reason. no reason at all. It is preventable.
Now, Rodriguez is currently in the hospital with injuries he sustained from that crash, but when he gets out, he's facing two counts of intoxication manslaughter. The family did tell me that they're planning a memorial in Daniela's honor Wednesday at the crash site. We'll have more details on our website at ksat.com, but for right now, live from Public Safety Headquarters, Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. You have to feel for that family. Thank you, Jaffney. We are still working to learn the name of a man killed in a house fire this morning. That fire reported around 4 a.m. at the Fred Townhomes off of Dartbrook Drive near Fredericksburg Road. A neighbor tells us he saw smoke coming from the vent before firefighters arrived. He tried going into the apartment it was coming from, which happened to be his next door neighbors. Despite his and firefighters attempts to save the man, he died at the scene. The cause of the fire under investigation, what investigators know so far, is it started in the kitchen? A man is recovering from smoke inhalation after his home caught fire around 8 o'clock in the morning. The San Antonio Fire Department called to the 14,000 block of Sir Barton Street, where the home was overtaken by heavy smoke and fire. It took crews a total of 10 minutes to put the flames out. One person taken to the hospital again for minor smoke inhalation. Hazmat crews were called to check out some suspicious items that were in the garage. However, the fire department says those items were not the cause of the fire. The San Antonio police are looking for answers in a 2020 double murder, and they're hoping this surveillance video will help them find the person responsible for the murders of Kyle Warren and Vanessa Mujica. The two were fatally shot in January of 2020 outside of McDonald's in the 8000 block of Culebra Road. That's between Westover Hills Boulevard and Ingram Road. Investigators say the victims were at the location for a drug deal. An argument ensued, and that's when shots were fired. Afterwards, the suspect's vehicle drove off towards Timberview Drive. If you have any information about this case, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. An Austin judge has issued an order blocking the arrest of House Democrats who have not come back to Texas for the special session. Many of them have been in Washington, D.C. since mid-July. They left to prevent a vote bill from passing during the first special session, which ended on Friday. Saturday was the start of the second special session caused by Governor Abbott. This order issued by State District Judge Brad Udruthia blocking the apprehension of any House Democrats who return to Texas for the next 14 days. It will expire unless the judge extends it. The Pentagon planning to ask the president for approval to make all active duty military members get vaccinated. The request would make it mandatory by mid-September if the FDA gives full approval for the vaccines. Before then, the Pentagon could actually move that deadline up. In a statement, President Joe Biden says he strongly supports that plan. The number of Americans in the hospital with COVID-19 jumping to more than 68,000 people. And it's no longer just adults or the immunocompromised. The Delta variant also putting more children in hospital beds across the country. ABC's Faith of Bube has the latest. The calls for more Americans to get vaccinated and quickly growing louder as the Delta variant breaks some grim pandemic records. Health officials say the U.S. is recording more daily COVID cases now than at any point in the first eight months of the entire pandemic. And this is not your grandfather's COVID. Uh, this Delta variant is an entirely uh, new and, and unexpected challenge for us. The U.S. daily COVID average rising to just under 100,000, nearly nine times higher than it was in the middle of June. So far, the states with the lowest vaccination rates appear to be the hardest hit. Dr. Peter Hotez on MSNBC. What we're looking at right now is, is a humanitarian catastrophe. New CDC data shows every state in the country is seeing high or substantial community spread. From Mississippi to Louisiana and 41 other states, hospital beds quickly filling up. In the Austin, Texas area, COVID patients flooding hospital rooms, leaving only six ICU beds available for about 2.3 million residents. It's impacting all of us, and it actually is beginning to threaten health care for people with other problems. The upcoming school year also drawing attention to younger Americans. One Florida hospital now caring for more than 20 children admitted with COVID, one on a ventilator. New Orleans Children's Hospital also treating more kids with a virus. But Dr. Ashish Jha says a simple five-point strategy can keep kids safe in the new school year. Number one is we got to get everybody who's eligible vaccinated. Second is we've got to do a lot to improve this air quality in schools, ventilation, uh, uh, filtration. Third is testing. 
And Dr. Zha adds that mask wearing and avoiding super crowded spaces will also be key. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. An advocacy group has filed a lawsuit blocking an order issued by Governor Greg Abbott that prevents school districts from requiring masks. It comes as Dallas ISD says that it will require students and staff to wear masks on campus and Houston ISD considering the same thing. Despite that order, the group Southern Center for Child Advocacy filed the lawsuit yesterday and says without a statewide mask mandate, local school districts should be able to decide whether to enforce mask wearing. Governor Abbott banned mask mandates in schools in the spring when cases were lower. He said earlier this month, Texas is done with mandates. And speaking of kids going back to school, students in the San Antonio Independent School District had their first day back to class this morning. But it wasn't only students that were happy to be back to in-person learning. Welcome to Hot Wheels! Woo! Come on down, come on down. SAISD Superintendent Pedro Martinez says the school, this school year, more than 99% of families in the district have opted to have their children wear masks. And teachers also being asked to mask up as well. I feel like we can get pretty close to normal, um, especially when it comes to collaboration in the classrooms and having students just get to work with each other again instead of staring behind a screen. The district plans to offer COVID-19 testing at every school in the district and vaccine hubs at some SAISD high schools. And SAISD parents have a new tool to help ease the transition when it comes to transportation. Our Samuel King is here now. Samuel, it's called the Stop Finder app. Yes, indeed, Steve and Ursula. It helps parents track their child's bus routes and hopefully avoid any mistakes. Now, SAISD tested the app for us. Parents can set alerts for their students, not just for the stop, but also a particular point on the route. It also allows parents to send messages to the school if the bus is late, for instance. Coming up at 6, more on how parents can get signed up for this app and the other improvements SAISD added this year when it comes to transportation. As for traffic uh, this evening, the evening commute, as it were, have a situation uh, near the airport. This is 281 at Loop 410, a crash there. You can see it under the pillar there. You see vehicles have arrived on the scene. I'll show you that real quick on the map. You can see some red on there as well. Going east to west, Loop 410 at 35 have some delays. And also in Seguin, if you're traveling on I-10, watch out for some delays there too, guys. And Sam, today we topped out at 95 degrees, which is two degrees below the average high and some fair weather clouds out there right now, but they're not producing any rain. They're not tall enough. 99 in Del Rio, 93 Floresville, Seguin at 92 degrees, 91 right now in Bulverde and Lavernia 94. You get the idea for the most part, low to mid 90s out there this evening. We'll see our temperatures gradually fall through the 80s. You'll still notice a bit of a breeze, which is nice to at least have some air movement. And overall, uh, we're looking at some warm temperatures, but nothing really outrageous for this time of year. We'll get into those details, but also talk about some activity in the tropics we're monitoring coming right up. Thank you, Adam. Feeling hotter than normal inside your home? Well, this summer's humidity might be one reason why, but it could also be time to take a peek at your window unit or central AC. The three things you can do to help them keep you cool. Next. Summer heat and humidity means our air conditioners getting a workout. But if your air conditioner is struggling to keep things cool enough, 12 in your size Marilyn Moore says there are some ways to maximize the cool when Mother Nature turns up the heat. When it's hot out and you just want to cool down, it's a bad time for your air conditioning to act up. So if your window unit or central AC isn't cooling like it used to, Consumer Report says there are a few fixes you can do yourself while waiting for the repairman. Start with the air filter. Well, a dirty filter is a common problem for window and central ACs. It restricts the airflow, which reduces the AC's ability to cool the room. Clean it or replace it yourself. No need for a service call. Window units typically have a reusable filter that you need to vacuum gently and then wash with soap and water about once a month during peak months. For central ACs, check your manual to see how often yours needs replacing. You'll need more frequent replacements if you have pets. Their hair can clog the filters fast. 
Another way to maximize efficiency, use weather stripping around window units. Location also matters. A window unit has to work harder in a sunny spot. Keep your shades closed during the day and keep the heat out. If the temperature seems off with your central AC, be sure the thermostat isn't exposed to direct sunlight. That may cause it to register the wrong temperatures. You also want to be sure that your AC has enough cooling capacity or power. Take a look at the room it's going to be in. If your unit is too small for your space, it will never keep up, especially on those super hot days. On the other hand, if your unit is too large, it might cycle too quickly and not dry out the air and leave your space a little humid. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Look at outside with live cam, a warm one, but not so warm that we would call it typical. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's 94, yeah. but it's still not August heat. Yeah. We're used to the we furnace can, at we, this point. We can handle this yeah, like no nothing. Problem. This is nothing for August around here. Not bad at all. And temperatures, they're not going to be outrageous. We are in a quiet weather pattern, but no excessive heat. Sure, heat indices will be up near slightly over 100 for a few hours every afternoon. That's the feels like temperature, but we're not talking actual triple digits in terms of the uh, thermometer reading. And there is some tropical activity that we're watching. So we're going to jump into all of it right now. First, looking at our Texas pattern, what we have ongoing, really not a whole lot, just that typical southeasterly breeze. So those cumulus clouds, you see them moving uh, from the southeast south southeast off to the north and the bigger picture does show a little bit of activity in far west texas that's good it's really the only part of the state that still has some abnormally dry conditions and even a minor drought especially down toward big bend national park where we still have one sliver literally one percent of texas is in drought and it's right down here near big bend national park so south of alpine south, south of marathon Nice to see some activity out there. They could still use it, of course. You look at the big picture and we don't have a single dominant feature right now. So often it's the big blue H planted overhead and it's just deflecting everything around us and really pressing on us to heat us up. That's not the case right now. And there isn't just one big defining uh, element in our weather pattern right now across the nation. So the doors are open and what we're watching now is what's likely to become our newest tropical cyclone. It would be Fred if it gets a name. Max sustained winds right now at 35 miles per hour. It's moving toward the Caribbean, but the thing is, it's going to be skipping along these islands, and that never helps in terms of development for these systems. So right now, the likelihood it is, is that it would remain fairly weak and may, mainly just a big rainmaker as it moves westward. It could make it into the eastern Gulf of Mexico by this weekend. Beyond Saturday, all bets are off. We don't know where it's going to go beyond then, but just keep in mind it could get into the eastern Gulf by Saturday. As for our rain chances around here, we've got that little 10% in Wednesday through Saturday just because a few of the coastal showers could pop up, you know, closer to the Gulf coastline, especially uh, DeWitt County, could, uh, Goliad County, Victoria County or Victoria area, you could have some of those pop up showers, but not until Sunday, Monday are we expecting the chance of a few pop ups closer to San Antonio. So then we give it about a 20 to 30%. So overall, not looking like what we've had in weeks past in terms of rain chances. Outside now we're at 95, feels like 101, dew point at 70, so it's sticky. What's nice though is our breeze. Look at these gusts, recent gusts. At the airport in town, 28, Del Rio gusting to 33. So yeah, it's hot, but at least we have some air movement and it's nice to have a breeze out there. Now we're triple digits in Del Rio and Catula, Laredo as well at 100. Those are the few triple digit readings across our area. And we'll start the day tomorrow morning at 77, make it up to 96 for the high temperature, a bit breezy southeasterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour. More specifically, you look across South Texas and still at the century mark again tomorrow in Del Rio, 101, Kerrville about 93, Canyon Lake 95. You get to Converse and Lackland area even, yeah, mid 90s, about 95 for the high. I do want to point out, friendly reminder, tomorrow is a CPS Energy peak demand day, so try to lower your energy usage between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. It's a good excuse to barbecue outside, by the way. <laughs> mid 90s the rest of this week, and then we'll trim off a few degrees by the weekend. Do you really ever need an excuse? Absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, that's why I figured. <laughs> All right, so the Texans get their quarterback 
back at camp. Well, we, we, and we don't know why he wasn't in camp yeah. for five days. When we come back, we'll let you know what their, his teammates are telling us about his disappearance. Also, when we come back, we'll introduce the star of the Dallas Cowboys training camp. <laughs> Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Deshaun Watson is back on the practice field for the Houston Texans after no word why he was not on the field for the last five days. A quarterback of the Houston Texans facing 22 civil lawsuits for sexual assault and misconduct during massages, also under investigation by the NFL. He demanded a trade, but the Texans themselves are not giving us any insight into why he was not on the field for the last five days. Even the players seem reluctant to reveal much, even if he's been in the building for the past five days. Sure, I can't tell you. I don't know. I can't. I don't. I just be worried about where I'll be at. I, I, I seen him time time, but I can't really tell you where you'll be at. And the Texans are preparing for the first preseason game against the Green Bay Packers that will come this Saturday. There is no question who is the star of the Dallas Cowboys training camp. It's second year wide receiver C.D. Lamb, who's made spectacular catches in Oxnard after an incredible rookie year in the league where he almost made 1,000 yards receiving. Now he's gone viral on social media with some of the receptions getting more playing time at wide out than slot receiver while his teammate Amari Cooper is still on the men after offseason ankle surgery. As far as, you know, me learning, it definitely was probably the best thing for me because I feel like it was a lot of pressure on me uh, within the offseason or camp, if you will, to learn, uh, push me to, to learn. If I want to be out there, I'm definitely going to have to, you know, learn where to go, where to line up. All right, the class of 2021 inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame that included former Cowboys wide receiver Drew Pearson, the original number 88, who waited 33 years for this moment and finally came last night. What a great moment seeing Roger Staubach help unveil his bus that will be in Canton. This confirms it. The wait is over. Over. How about that? The original number 88 being pre presented for enshrinement in the Pro Football Hall of Fame by my Hall of Fame quarterback, Roger Staubach. Wow! Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Roger. You know, they only give me a few minutes to make this acceptance speech, but it only took 32 seconds to catch the Hail Mary from my quarterback, Roger Staubach. <laughs> That's correct. Don't forget to sign up for the Haney & Company Charity Golf Tournament benefiting St. Vinny's Bistro at Haven for Hope. It's set for Monday, August the 23rd at 8 a.m. at the Quarry Golf Club. Breakfast and lunch plus prizes to sign up. Just go to their website, HaneyCPAs.com slash golf. That was just a great moment for me to watch last night, seeing Drew so happy because he waited so long. And I love the bust with all that hair <laughs> and, now, and now he was rubbing the hair on nice. it. That was great. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. 77 in the morning tomorrow, then 96 by the afternoon, just like today with a decent amount of sunshine and a nice breeze out of the southeast at 10 to 20 with some higher gusts. Quiet this week, a few coastal showers could pop up. That's about it. And then we do have slight chances even around town Sunday, Monday. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.